Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts with another word. Now this is going to be short and brief because I believe from, I was getting ready to turn off my computer and I kept seeing Galatians 5 and I believe what God wants to do for some of you who have not been in church for a long time or some of you who may not be well versed in the ways of God, he wants you to know the difference between living in the flesh and living in the spirit. Okay, here we go. And then Pat's two cents will follow. Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Galatians chapter 5 starting at verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth, I'm just reading on now, 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against flesh. And these are contrary, opposite, the one to another, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. In other words, you sabotage your potential by living in the flesh. You screw up. What you're trying to stack up, you screw it up. You knock down your castle trying to, to, to live by the flesh because it's a destructive life. Okay, Move, that's me just adding my little two cents of, of description there. Verse 18, but if ye be led of the Spirit, that's the Spirit of God, ye are not even under the law. 19. Now, the, this is what God wants you to know. This is the difference. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now, before I read this, I want you to hear, these are the things that God considers sinful, abominable. He hates it. He detests it. And he wants you to stop because they bring very negative consequences. They bring curses into your life. They bring destruction and counterproductivity and all kind of mess and confusion, chaos, destruction in your life. He doesn't want that for you. Like telling a child, don't play with the stove because if it's on and you don't realize you could get burnt. Well, he's not being a killjoy. He's protecting us through his love. Now, he wants you to understand the difference between flesh and spirit. You hear me? Now, I'm just going to read it, and then we'll be done. It's going to be real brief. Verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. I don't have to explain that. <laughs> Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I said that slowly and deliberately so you wouldn't be confused about what the word says about those things. Verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is the Holy Spirit, fruit, behavior, characteristics, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Now, for those of you who don't know what temperance means, it means self-control. Attitude, temper, mouth, everything. 
So for those of you who feel like you can cuss somebody out in the New York Mini, guess what? That's not self-control. That is not temperance. That's flesh. Okay. Meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its affections, with the affections and lusts. Do you hear me? Tossed it all in the trash. If we live in the spirit, well, let us also walk in the spirit. You know? Practice what you preach. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. That's it. Think about that. Now you know what the works of the flesh are and the works of the spirit. Do you see why God wants you to live in the spirit? Nothing but good can come out of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The characteristics of God, the way God, what would Jesus do is a great way to see what you would. Would Jesus cut somebody out? Uh, no. So then why are you? <laughs> anyway, I'm done. You hear what that says. It speaks for itself. God bless you as you line up with the word and will of God. Amen.